Well, from price undercuttings to fraud in the business, the insurance industry in Kenya is at a crossroad. Good evening and thank you very much for joining us. This is The Trading Bell. My name is O'Brien Kimani. Later on, I'll be talking to Tom Gitogo. He's a Chief Executive Officer of CIC Insurance Group. And of course, we'll be looking at some of the challenges that the industry is facing and how the players are addressing them. This is, of course, The Trading Bell. And of course, later on, I'll be talking to Elizabeth Wangeshi. She is the Head of Research at Genghis Capital. And we'll be looking at how the equities are performing, bearing in mind that the market has been on an upward streak for the last one month. This is The Trading Bell. Let's now talk to Tom Igitogo and get to understand how the market is performing. Morning, Thank you, Tom, Brian. for joining us. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Take position. Very good. And for a company that has been around for close to half a century, you must have seen a lot of um, changes, you know, in the environment that you operate in. Uh, what would you term or how would you term the current environment or business environment? Uh, the current business environment is uh, uh, tough in some areas mm -hmm. and promising in others. Uh, tough in the sense that uh, every Kenyan can currently see uh, the challenges that the uh, country is facing. We've got drought, uh, prolonged uh, dry spells. Mm -hmm. And uh, for us in the insurance business, uh, particularly where we insure livestock and uh, crop, this obviously has an impact on our business. Mm -hmm. um, when the citizens are struggling financially, uh, then insurance premiums or any investments uh, are also impacted. So mm -hmm. those are some of the challenges. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the fact that this is an election year uh, means that there is this big uncertainty in the month of August that most businesses would prefer to have uh, an idea of where we go from there. Mm -hmm. In business, as long as there is an uncertainty of some uh, nature, that impacts business as well, especially in the investment uh, uh, environment. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, what would you say is the biggest challenge that face or that faces the insurance sector in the long term? In the long term, it is probably regulation. Mm -hmm. uh, we have just started uh, uh, a risk-based uh, capital regime where the nature of the business that the insurance is getting into mm -hmm. determines how much share capital shareholders have to mm -hmm. put in. Mm -hmm. the, obvious, the other thing is we've seen keen interest of our market here by foreign players. Mm -hmm. So local businesses have to now uh, uh, participate uh, at a level that is world class. Mm -hmm. Now that's not a bad thing for the country. That is very good for the uh, customer because it means they receive world-class services. Mm -hmm. So in the long term, uh, uptake needs to go up. It has been very low. Mm -hmm. uh, very many people uh, do not have the right level of insurance. Mm -hmm. And it is our interest that in the long term, uh, that level goes up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about regulations, and we know for sure that the IRA which is the market regulator, you know, has come up with new um, uh, 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 ratio threshold. I don't know how far you have gone in ensuring that um, you maintain the required minimum ratio. Yeah. Uh, at CSE Group, we have obviously uh, met the various thresholds because we've been planning uh, for this. But some of the impact will be that some companies may need to merge to be able to raise the right level of capital. Mm -hmm. Again, that's a good thing because it means the institutions we will have will be stronger and more robust, mm -hmm. which therefore means that any savings that uh, a Kenyan has with an insurance uh, company uh, is safe. It also makes us uh, uh, have the opportunity to underwrite big risks. You will have heard that uh, marine insurance is now a big thing mm -hmm. in the insurance uh, industry. Mm -hmm. uh, from this January, all imports uh, into the country need to be insured here. Previously, a lot of them were being insured in the countries Abroad, of yeah. origin, mm -hmm. which uh, didn't help the economy here, 
but also didn't help the importer because most of them didn't bother with follow-up of any claim because mm -hmm. uh, of the complications of both language mm -hmm. and time. Mm -hmm. uh, CIC group is obviously very well postured to take advantage of this and at when you asked earlier what are some of the issues on the landscape, uh, this is one of the potential growth areas mm -hmm. that is good both for the country mm -hmm. but also for the insurance industry mm -hmm. and that and will help hopefully uh, some of the uh, uh, areas of growth that insurance companies are looking for. And, 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 and you talk about, you know, you know, the market, and we know for sure that the Kenyan market is quite small, you know, compared to South Africa, whereby um, uh, uh, the products, uh, the, the product uptake average about 9%, compared to Kenya, where it's about 3%. That's right. uh, are we likely to see a serious reorganization of the market whereby we are likely to see a, a number of acquisitions and mergers and you as CIC do you have a player that you are targeting in the market? <laughs> uh, that's a good question uh, we are always in the market to see who we can uh, take up uh, if it makes business sense for the long-term strategy of CIC mm. currently we have not identified any and we believe that our uh, growth uh, will uh, put us in good uh, stead. Mm -hmm. But talking about the, uh, the level of awareness of what insurance is, and thank you for this sort of engagement because it uh, brings uh, uh, some clarity of what insurance is about uh, and what investments are about because the insurance company of the future will need to do more in terms of uh, meeting client needs than just insurance and that's part of how the penetration uh, will will go up mm -hmm. we need to have more uh, engagement with uh, our potential clients and even our existing clients to explain to them what we are doing mm -hmm. as well as what insurance needs uh, they might need that they currently do not have and why that level of engagement I mm -hmm. think is what will be part of the uh, of the key obviously how we distribute and engage the customers across the country mm -hmm. because currently they do not compare us to other insurance companies only. Mm -hmm. They compare us with other service providers, mm -hmm. whether that's uh, mobile phone companies, their banks, and so on. Mm -hmm. And this is all good for the industry because it forces us and encourages us uh, to step up our service. Mm -hmm. And uh, CIC is obviously uh, doing this uh, uh, very well. Mm -hmm. And y you, you have a plan whereby you want to venture into a number of uh, uh, African countries. Uh, we know for sure that you are in South Sudan, you are in uh, Malawi, mm -hmm. and uh, you are in Uganda. That's right. And now, of course, here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And we know for sure that the Kenyan market is the most profitable for your group. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the decision to go to South Sudan, do you look back and regret, bearing in mind that the country has been in turmoil for the last uh, three years? Uh, first of all, they are our neighbors. It's good to engage positively with your neighbors. Mm. Secondly, it is a country that is very well endowed uh, resource-wise. Um, if you look at the arable land there proportion, in Kenya only 40% of the country is arable, mm. where things can grow. Mm -hmm. uh, in that country it's more than 80%. So they also have uh, many minerals, uh, a huge resource there, mm. and they've got uh, rare, uh, you know, uh, and uh, forests that, uh, uh, you know, uh, around the world, forest cover is a big issue. Mm. So, no, we do not regret. Uh, however, it would be helpful if the political scenario uh, uh, settled quicker, because one of the things that uh, pains us is to see so much potential mm -hmm. uh, that's waiting too long uh, to take off. Mm -hmm. But no, we do not regret. It just means we perhaps have to wait longer uh, on the plans that we had for the country. Mm -hmm. uh, already, uh, it is doing reasonably well, uh, but the uncertainty or the interruption, there has been two interruptions now, mm -hmm. uh, December 2013 and July last year, uh, we could obviously do with less interruptions mm -hmm. or no interruptions whatsoever. Mm -hmm. No regrets whatsoever. It's a very promising country. And I see uh, uh, some point in the future, some of our biggest uh, profits coming from that coming country. From South Sudan. Mm -hmm. And w w at what point do you plan to or do you expect to break even in that market? And uh, for how long can you hold on and, and hang on there 
before you say, no, this is becoming too much, we must get out of here? Okay. Yeah, obviously, uh, being a listed company, uh, we have a duty of care to our investors mm -hmm. uh, who are the general public and so on. So we are continually reviewing our position there. But for the time being, we are comfortable that by lowering our level of investment to be uh, pari to be at the same level mm. as the activities there, mm. we can hold on for uh, for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, and for a while for you means five years, two years, three years. And uh, you know this is something that we review on an annual basis. So mm -hmm. every year I'll be able to report uh, on how we are so doing. It's a, but it's so an, it's far, an ongoing it's an ongoing concern. thing because already there are signs that uh, business is picking up. Mm -hmm. The economy there is largely uh, carried by the NGOs, mm -hmm. uh, international NGOs that work there. Mm -hmm. And we've already seen them coming back and activity picking up. Mm -hmm. And as that happens, uh, the CAC uh, business there is also uh, picking up. Mm -hmm. So as of now, no plans for whatsoever mm -hmm. uh, to pull out, uh, but this is something we will uh, continue to review. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tom, I also want you to, to, to help us understand how the market is going to overcome the challenges of undercutting, which is a serious issue in this business. And of course, the question of fraud, which is costing the insurance industry in Kenya a significant amount of money. Yes. Uh, Undercutting, um, we have to get to a level where we are competing on service, quality service and quality products uh, to our customers. Uh, at CSE Group, what we have done is we have s focused more on the service and the quality of service that we give rather than mm. uh, competing on price. Because no one gains, not even the client, if we are all on this downward spiral mm. of price. Of course, price is important. And uh, uh, you cannot ignore the fact that you need to be efficient in mm. your operations and so on, mm. so that you're not passing on uh, uh, price uh, inefficiencies to the customer. Yeah. On the issue of fraud, that is a big one. Um, one of the things that uh, we need to see happen is for fraudsters to be punitively punished mm. by, the, uh, by our laws uh, when they go to court. Uh, because that, that then will, if you like, uh, discourage uh, this menace because mm. it is a menace. And uh, uh, it is probably accurate to say that about 30% of claims paid are paid to fraudsters. Mm. This is through exaggerated uh, repair costs, if it yeah. is uh, motor vehicles for that matter, or activities that didn't happen in the first uh, place. Very well. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and finally, um, you issued a profit warning, That's and right. um, you haven't given out dividends to your, to your shareholders for the last, uh, I think, five years now? No, we have been uh, giving um, uh, at about 10, 10, 10%. percent. 10%. 10 percent now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to hear from you um, going forward. Um, when do you expect the current situation you know, to improve so that um, your shareholders can get yeah. better yields? That's right, yeah. That's a good question. A profit warning, as you know, is uh, uh, an announcement to the market that the profits that the company will realize uh, for the period to December 2016 mm. will be lower uh, than the year before uh, by more than 25%. Mm. Now, why would profits go down for an organization? There are various reasons. One, obviously, is the environment that we are working in. Mm. I think everyone uh, appreciates that 2016 and uh, indeed 2017 going forward is a difficult environment uh, to work in. We saw the capping of interest rates mm. uh, for uh, banks. Uh, which impacts the level of investment income that uh, you know insurance companies, certainly CIC Group, uh, would realize. Mm. The other one is obviously the stock market. The securities exchange prices have been depressed uh, for two years now, mm. and the, this trend Actually has continued for three years, mm. and the trend has continued uh, in uh, 2017 as well. The suppression of market prices on the securities exchange does not necessarily reflect a fundamental deficiency in the company itself. Yeah. It could be the sentiments of investors. Mm -hmm. And we have seen historically that 
on the you know in in, in a period leading up to elections uh, there is a wait and see uh, attitude mm. and there's nothing wrong with that because mm -hmm. people would like to probably hold longer to an inv investment they want to make yeah. uh, and await the outcome of the elections. Mm -hmm. So the decrease, the significant decrease in prices on the securities exchange, and we are a big investor mm -hmm. on the securities exchange, mm -hmm. has also impacted mm -hmm. our uh, profitability. Mm -hmm. So it's things like those. The other reason uh, that we have given a profit warning is we are investing for the future. If you draw funds to invest for a solid future, mm -hmm. those funds uh, are now uh, not earning what they would for the time being, mm -hmm. but it is this foundation that you will rely on in the future uh, for future uh, growth. Tom, thank you very much because we have to come to an end to this interview. Thank you, Brian. Thank and you very um, much. I hope I'll be here uh, uh, again. Oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Tom Gitogo, Chief Executive Officer, CIC Group, joining us here on the trading bell to help us understand the market dynamics of the insurance industry here in Kenya. This is a trading bell. We are back shortly. And the figures there of how the market has performed in the last one week. The top gainers and the, the top losers, Elizabeth Wangeshi, is the head of research at Genji's Capital. She's joining us here to help us understand the figures and, of course, put them into better perspective. Thank you very much indeed, Wangeshi. When you look at all the four indices mm -hmm. of the markets, they're all looking up. What are the critical fundamentals to this? All right. Thank you for having me for, for this show. What has been happening is that the past uh, one week, uh, we've seen uh, increased uh, foreign dominance in uh, the market, mostly on the blue chip companies, the likes of Safaricom, and also on the banking sector, we've seen uh, also high activity. Uh, again, also the indices, most of the companies have also been gaining. That's why we've seen all the market indicators pointing uh, pointing upwards. And why are the foreign yeah. in investors trooping back? What have they seen that local investors are not seeing? One, the most obvious reason is that uh, most of the prices are very highly discounted. So that means uh, the counters are still attractive to the investor and that's why there's a very huge interest on the, on the companies mm -hmm. and also based on their fundamentals. If you look at the multiples, they're all trading below the industry average. Mm -hmm. yes. And w when you look at the four indices, can we say that we have hit the rock bottom and the only place we can go is up? Yeah, I would say there's still a big opportunity, a big chance for the index to go up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's still the expectation is that it's still going to rise up. Mm -hmm. yes. And I also want you to attribute to what has been happening to the fact that we have entered into the financial result season. Do you think this is somehow swaying investors' um, uh, uh, reactions? That's a major reason as to why we've seen that uh, interest from investors. One is that uh, investors are anticipating that some companies will perform well. That is uh, probably excluding uh, banking sector expectation because of the interest rate cap that was introduced last year. Mm -hmm. But for most of the companies, uh, blue chip companies, the likes of Safaricom already, and uh, East Africa breweries, uh, likes of uh, BAT, those uh, won't be really affected much. So there's that anticipation that the results will be better. Mm -hmm. yes. And turning on to the top gainers and top mm -hmm. losers, um, I have a very interesting, um, a key interest in a same-time investment bearing in mind that uh, it is the biggest mover uh, uh, in terms of uh, top gainers mm -hmm. and Barclays Bank. We know for sure that same-time plans to open one of their flagship projects, that is the Two Rivers Mall next week. 
Uh, could this be having anything to do with um, the, the, the movement of uh, the shares of this company? Yes, that could be one of the reasons. Uh, the fact that they'll be opening uh, the Two Rivers Mall next week. And also last week they also announced that they purchased land in uh, Kiambu. Uh, they are planning to build an international school in together with a private equity firm. So with that it shows that the strategy is are in line with what uh, they promised the investors. Mm -hmm. So that's why we've seen much, much interest. And again, in terms of uh, their fundamentals, they are also very highly discounted. If you look at uh, the book value per share for Centum, it's at 61, mm -hmm. as at se September 2016. Mm -hmm. And that means if you compare with the current price, it shows that it's very highly discounted, meaning it's very attractive to investors even at this moment. Mm -hmm. yes. We would have touched on backlist, but in the interest of time, mm -hmm. uh, let's go to the top losers. Decons, what is happening? It has been on the losing streak for a couple of months now. What is happening? Yes, uh, for, for Decons Kenya, the, the trend has been on a downward uh, movement. Basically, they, they gave a profit warning announcement mm -hmm. with the expectation that their net sales will be low and also their bottom line performance will be lower by 25 percent mm -hmm. so this means uh, investors are selling off from the counter uh, meaning they're losing confidence on the on the company mm -hmm. basically because of the financial performance mm -hmm. yes in the next one week which are the stocks to watch uh, the stocks to watch are uh, safaricom mm -hmm. um, also kenoko bill stocks to watch also arm cement yeah mm -hmm. yes. and what are the fundamentals the fundamentals look really strong. Mm -hmm. uh, they're very highly discounted when you look at also the multiples. Mm -hmm. And also the story on, this, on the companies are also a bit realistic. And also the performance is also expected to be good. Elizabeth, thank yes. you very much indeed for joining us here. Mm. Thank Elizabeth you Elizabeth Mongeshi much. is the head of research at Genji's Capital, joining us here on the trading bell to help us break the figures for you. This is the trading bell. We are back shortly. Where did the NSC change its name from Nairobi Stock Exchange to Nairobi Security? The name was changed because uh, the exchange offers other securities other than the stocks. Uh, for instance, uh, exchange traded funds, unit trust, and also the exchange uh, plans to offer derivatives. That's why overall the name was changed from Nairobi Stock Exchange to Nairobi Securities Exchange. Well, and it's a wrap here on the trading belt. Thank you very much indeed for being part of us this evening. And of course, we are reminding you to register for the NSC Investment Challenge. For more information, you can always log on to their website. That is www.nsc.co.ke. My name is O'Brien Kimani. On behalf of the entire trading belt crew, we want to thank you very much. And of course, remind you that we value your interactions with us. Our SMS line is... 22162, always remember to start with the name or with the word B's, that is B-I-Z. And of course, at the trading bell is our Twitter handle. For um, You can also get in touch with us through our Facebook page, which is uh, the trading bell TV show. My personal Twitter handle is at O'Brien Kimani. We'll see you next Thursday. But for now, we take you back to Broadcasting House for the continuation of Business Insight.